I never had a stable life. My life was based off drugs, alcohol, gangs, constantly being moved around from school to school most of my life. I never really had any friends. Um, most of the friends I did have were the ones that turned their back on me and became my worst enemies in my life. They beat me up, show me in the hallways, lock me up in lockers. I've had my face smashed in urinals before. I've been jumped by five people before. Um, I lost my mom at the age of three. She was murdered by a guy that she met online. I had to sit back and watch it all. I was locked up in a closet for a whole entire week with her dead body next to me. My dad was never around. My mom was just absolutely afraid of my dad for certain reasons. My dad was into drugs, alcohol. He was pretty much a bad person. So he was never around throughout my baby life. Didn't even meet my dad till I was four. Once my dad got custody of me after my mom was murdered, um, my grandparents, which is my mom's parents, they were trying to get custody of me and they almost did, but luckily my dad won since, you know, he's the father. Um, when my dad got custody of me, um, they allowed me to see my mom's parents my mom's parents weren't mentally stable. They weren't mentally there. They were just bad people. And when I went to go see them, um, my grandpa molested me. Um, my dad found out and, you know, hit him up. It was saying, you know, I'm going to kill you. And they, he got scared and moved off and I never heard from him again. Now, I never learned how to walk up until I was like five or six years old. Never really learned how to properly walk. Because my mom, you know, she wasn't mentally there, so she didn't know how to teach me all that. My hands weren't really fully developed either. I, She never let me, you know, use my hands to play with toys or anything, so they never fully, you know, functioned like, when you squeeze on my hands now, they're, you know, squishy. They're not, like, bony like most people's hands are. I mean, they're, they're a little bit better now from back then, but, yeah. Um, so, my dad married this one woman named Ginger. She was my stepmom throughout my baby years. There was just a lot of arguing, a lot of fighting, just a lot of you know, just screaming and yelling, me and my sister would hear it, and we kind of grew up with that, most of our childhood life. My dad was still into drugs, my dad was, he had, he had a good career, he had this one job called air duct cleaning, and my dad was pulling in about two grand every week, but he would use it on drugs, and I mean, obviously, he used it on bills and stuff like he was supposed to, but he still did a lot of bad stuff with it. So throughout that time being, around 2008, I believe, my dad divorced my stepmom, Ginger. That's when he met my stepmom now, Sarah. Sarah used to be my babysitter. <laughs> she, she was my babysitter for the longest time. And then my dad finally got with her. And then throughout the time being of my dad being with her, we never had a stable life whatsoever. We were, we lived all over Texas. We lived all over Oklahoma. We lived in Utah for a little while. Um, just all kinds of stuff. Like, I'll probably be in two to three different schools within the first month or two. 
so I didn't even have chance have a chance to like make any friends whatsoever. Um, you know what was the point if I was just gonna move? You know, and I got picked on by that. You know, and then when I move into a different school and then come back into the school, which is my hometown, Purcell. We've been in and out of Purcell so many times. I mean, growing up in my life. Each time we came back to Purcell to start living there, people would always say to me, you know, oh, you're going to move again within the next week or so. Watch. You know, you're going to be the failure for the rest of your life. You're never going to make it. Um, th my life was just very, very unstable. I, I always got picked on. You know, again, I always got picked on just... You know, I had my face kicked in, I just, you know, and I just kind of gave up on just learning everything in school, you know, because what was the point, you know? I, I couldn't focus on anything, you know, with me moving and then just everything. I had to take therapy throughout most of my baby years after seeing what happened with my mom. That took me forever to get over. And then even after that, I had to take special ed. That wasn't easy to go over. Um... I do remember in my baby time, after, you know, my mom was murdered and when I was kidnapped, uh, I was taken into Kansas because that's where cops, <clears throat> I think, found me. I think that's where they found me was in Kansas. And I was staying with this one woman before my dad and my stepmom, Ginger, came to get me. And I was only three, and apparently I had 11 waffles because I didn't eat for almost a whole week. So by the time I hit the age of 12, I moved to Utah. And right around this time period, that's when I met my uncle. Um, everybody called him Turtle. Um, Turtle really made me find, find who I truly was. He, he really manned me up. Because, you know, I didn't know how to defend myself at all. And he really just made me find who I truly was. So I lived there for a good three to four years. My dad and my stepmom, Sarah, were all the way down in Texas, and, you know, I wanted to finish school there because I, I didn't want to move again, you know. So I stayed there for about three to four years, and then I finally came back into Purcell, and that was the last time I moved. I mean, we moved into a different house, into a different city, obviously, but we stayed in the same state, thank God. So I went, so I grew up, there for a little while, finished, didn't finish school, I dropped out at the age of 16 due to the same reasons, except I got into drugs really, really bad, um, wasn't so much on alcohol, I was mainly into drugs, um, I got, you know, into gangs, I was recruiting people, just all kinds of stuff, um, I was on meth, I did coke, I did marijuana, I did K2 once, uh, all kinds of drugs that I won't mention. Um, you know, after we got clean, after, you know, my house got popped, we came back, we came over here, and we've been here ever since. And I've been almost seven years clean. And when, at the age of 13, I started doing rap battles. I started going to little places where they were holding rap battles at the time. And that's what I found because I, I couldn't find anything I was good at. I wasn't good at sports. I wasn't good at anything. Wasn't even good at drawing, not at all. Like, so I found my passion in rap battle. And I did that for a good four to five years. I, th I think it's about four to five, no, seven years, seven years. Did it up for about seven years, and I was completely unstoppable in rap battle. Everybody considered me doing music, but I did not not want to do music whatsoever, and that's when I met my producer, Caesar. Caesar saw that I had passion in me, and he wanted me to do music, and he signed me in the year of 2017. Right around the time I got clean, um, I started doing music. My very first song, I literally did not know how to make a song, believe it or not. 
every time I hopped on a song, I literally like thought it was a rap battle. Like every time I recorded to recorded my vocals on a song, I took it as a rap battle. I was like, it sounded like I was dissing someone. Um, and then, you know, I find he finally taught me how to, you know, actually make a song. And once I finally learned on how to do that, that's when my music started really kicking off. So that's where I really came from. My life was very, very hard. I don't want to explain the full thing because it's just too much, but I feel like I broke it down as much as I can to the main point of where I came from. My life was very hard. It was very unstable and a life that a kid should never live through. But at the same time, I want to be me right now if it wasn't for it. God took me through all these things in my life for reasons to be me now is to and I feel like my passion in music is to help the ones that struggle through the same things that I struggle with and let them know that there's always an end to every pain and suffering and everything happens for a reason find what you're good at and follow it because I did if I can do it you can do it